Hi ladies, I have run a five minute mile, 11 minute, two mile, and around 618 pace for the 10 mile distance. And I'm a former professional triathlete for Team USA. But I'm here to remind you, this is all you need to remember, is that everyone has a day one. I had a day one too. And these are my top 10 tips for beginners that are going to save you tons of time. We have Ava here joining us today. She is my third baby. I am pregnant with number four, so that's what's going on with the belly here. And also have a video just specifically for pregnancy. Pregnancy running. We're going to start right off the bat on exactly how to run by going over the form essentials. First upper body form and then lower body form. There's actually more to upper body than there is to a lower body. So first starting with our gaze we are going to be looking about 10 feet ahead as you're running approximately three meters. What I never want to see is your gaze down at the ground especially not down at your feet. That's going to cause an arch back position. Remember to bear with me. I've got this pregnant belly here. Think about bringing your shoulder blades together a little bit, especially if you're somebody who works at a computer, this is going to be your go-to posture. And when you are running, this is going to be really unhealthy for your spine and compression. So instead, shoulders need to come back and down so that your shoulders are nice and low. As you get tired, especially towards the end of a run, it's common to want to clench your shoulders and pull them up. You are going to be smarter than that and keep your shoulders down. Arms, arms will be at 90 degrees all of the time. So when they're forward and when they're back, they're staying at 90 degrees. When you're tired, they might wanna hang down here. I call this monkey running. This is not doing anything good for you. Keep those arms at 90 degrees. Fist, you're not actually making a fist. This is going to waste energy as well as jackknife hands. This wastes energy as well. Instead, I need you to make pretend that you have a Ritz cracker in both fingers and you're gently pinching with your index finger and thumb your Ritz crackers and holding it very gently in your hand. This is the perfect amount of fists you should be making when you are running. Do a little self check. I see this more in female runners than males, but I see a lot of crisscross creating an X across your chest what this is doing is propelling your energy laterally instead of forward like we want so arms need to be at your side the entire time just like this the single most important factor related to your upper body is the hip hinge so instead of running with your body straight up like good posture way up here like we would when we're walking look what this does if you have your body straight up me landing on our heels not good at all for your heels. We're causing pressure point here, here, and in your knees. So instead, there needs to be a slight angle at the hips. Back is nice and straight, not arched. And this is going to allow for a perfect heel lift from the back foot, a nice long hip extension, which is going to provide for a better leg swing forward. Knee is going to come up. And then this is leading into number two, our lower body work. We're coming, knee is coming up high and then we're landing midfoot and heel at the same time. Key, midfoot and heel at the same time, not heel striking, not just being like, oh, I need to land midfoot and thinking about that. Never just landing on your toes, you're not a 100 meter sprinter. <laughs> we're landing midfoot because we're at this slight hinge, back heel is coming up, knee drive coming forward and landing. As you run, it will click. You'll be like, wow, I just needed a tad bit of a forward lean. Do not lean too far forward. That's not gonna do you any good. It's really just very slight. And if you need help knowing if you're doing it, have a friend take a video to make sure that your form is good. I want you to forget if anyone has ever told you to stride it out or to have big long strides. That is literally the worst advice that someone could give you. Over striding, in effect, makes you land on your heel, which causes is a breaking mechanism. Not only that, but it's going to put excessive pressure on the shin, the heel, and the knee, lending you to get an injury. So instead, I want you to think short, quick steps, short, quick steps. And as you do that, you're going to have a quicker cadence, which elite athletes have a quicker cadence, and it is proven to be more efficient and helps set you up so that you are not getting injured all the time. So whether you are running nice and slow, you're still going to have the same cadence, it might be around 170, 180 per minute, how many times your feet hit the ground. You can just count on your right leg, see if it adds up to 90 for one minute, count on your right leg. Does it add up to 90? Like, great, that's 180. That's a really healthy cadence, but you're gonna be hitting 180 whether you're running nice and easy and slow 
or whether you're running fast, what changes is the power off of your back leg and the knee drive of your front leg, and that is going to propel you through the air, and that's how you get faster speed while running at the same short, quick step, short, quick step cadence. As you get into running, you're going to want to start with planned walk-run intervals. I'm talking one minute of walking, one minute of running, and repeat that for a total of 30 minutes. Now, even if cardiovascularly you're feeling good, keep in mind that your joints and your bones also need to play catch up because running is a high impact activity. And even if you're feeling up to running longer, the best way to ease into it injury-free so you can keep being a runner for longer and actually enjoy it is to do walk run intervals until you can run a full 30 minutes without walking at all and then at that point you don't need walk run intervals anymore you can ease your way up to 35 minutes 40 minutes and so on a common mistake that beginner runners make is that they start out too fast when I was training at different conferences for track I met some Kenyans who are can't speak to the whole population right but they tend to be phenomenal runners and I learned from them the importance of starting each run really really slow like they start super slow and I was kind of shocked that they were running you know 13 minute miles to warm up when these guys could run sub four minute miles they do that every time in order to get their body going I said why do you start so slow they said what's the rush and that's the point what's the rush because if you start a run too fast it can quickly become mentally very defeating as you pucker out and get tired but if you start slow there's always room to get faster not not all running surfaces are created equal. We want to limit running on pavement, concrete asphalt as much as possible. Now asphalt is actually a little bit better than concrete on sidewalks, but the problem with asphalt is that most roads are crowned, they're going to be curved. So when you're running on the edge away from traffic, right? It's common that one leg is going to be a little bit higher than the other, and this means that your hips are shifted and that's setting you up for injury. So be wary of that if you're running on the side of the road. I actually choose to run in the dirt or in the grass on the side of the road instead of on the asphalt itself. When you can, always choose to run in the grass, dirt, bike trail, gravel. It is always going to be preferable and reduce your joint impact compared to running on asphalt and concrete because I want you to be a long time runner for life and not feel crippled when you're 50 or 60 years old. Beach running is something I rarely do. If I go to the beach, I know that I'm just gonna run maybe two miles on it and that's coming from someone that has experience running because you just have a high likelihood of getting shin splints. Now you can work yourself up to it. If you live near the beach and you know it's something you wanna do regularly, it can be very good for you as long as you ease your body into it so that your connective tissues and your muscles and joints can all catch up and you don't get shin splints by doing walk-run intervals on sand and choose the harder part of the sand, the part that's closer to the water versus the really soft, deep sand. This one is maybe my favorite tip because it's the most fun. I really want you to enjoy running and a lot of times we get stuck in our own negative thought patterns. The best way out of this is to take 10 minutes when you're on the couch in the evening and figure out your podcast list. Come up with a great queue of podcasts that are just going to go in order for you so you can feel your mind and your brain being stimulated which is awesome if you're a mother like me and you want to still have some personal development time. On the run is a wonderful peaceful place to do that. So not only do you check off doing a run, but you also feel like, hey, I learned something today. I feel more motivated today. Another great thing that I love are audiobooks, and I kind of use those as a treat. So I'll be listening to a book that I'm really enjoying, and I only listen to it on runs. So it's just another way to look forward to a long run, because that's when I get to listen to this book that I'm enjoying. And then when you're in the mood for more of like creativity or working through your own life or future, uh, the best thing for that is music. I do recommend using earbuds that are not actually in your ears, they're kind of right outside your earlobes and that way you're still aware of your surroundings, traffic, people around you. I recommend running hills. I can see you behind the screen almost like groaning at me right now because I know that hills are extremely difficult, but they're one of the best ways to increase your strength and stamina 
as well as your endurance doing hard things without having to add more mileage. More mileage can often lead to injuries. Doing hill repeats or just running in a nice rolling hill area is really going to help you expand your fitness faster than always choosing the flat path. I totally understand if you're in an area and you're like, hey Ash, we don't have any hills. I got you, girl. Instead, I want you to do box step ups. You can do one minute of alternating legs, left, right, left, right, and then a minute all on the right leg, a minute all on the left leg, and do this for a total of nine minutes, and you're going to get the same physical stimulation that I want you to get as if you were training on hills. If you have access to a treadmill, go ahead and set it on grade nine and do short intervals, about 30 seconds of running up on, I said grade nine, grade six, <laughs> short intervals running up on your hill on the treadmill and then put it back down to zero or one. One on a treadmill is what is going to most accurately stimulate outside running. This is my practical tip. This is the mom side coming out of me. So I always have sunglasses on. I don't right now because it's kind of weird in videos and I feel like it's impersonal, but wear some non-slipping glasses. These are my favorite. I have them linked on Ashley's favorites. Get a hat that you love. I'm a huge fan of these Adidas hats because they're not Velcro. They have this easy strap in the back to tighten or to loosen it depending on your hairstyle for the day, how you want it to fit or whether you want your pony to go through the back so it doesn't blow away and then facial sunscreen that is actually healthy for you and non-toxic. I've been using this stuff, this is called Supergoop, for about six months and all the other non-toxic sunscreens I've used are white and thick and I really didn't enjoy them. So this has been my favorite. This is also tagged in the description box below. I have all of this under Ashley's favorite products on my website. These are your three essentials. And then of course, you already know that you need a high impact sports bra, shorts that do not chafe or leggings, and then your running shoes is something that you don't wanna be cheap on. Running is a very minimal sport. Like you don't need a fancy watch. Just start with a cheap watch, just go by time. You don't necessarily need to know your mileage yet. And, but shoes, shoes are something that you want to invest in. And it's nice to have two pairs. You can alternate between pairs so that if one pair isn't perfect for your type of stride or gait or foot, then the other one kind of balances it out. So I wear a pair every other time and you can get fitted most likely for free at your local running store to see if your feet are pronators, if you tend to cave your feet in when you're running or if you tend to lean your feet to the outside, that's called supinator. You'll show markings on the side of your shoe if you're a supinator or if you're neutral, if you just run kind of in the middle. And then also at the local running store, they'll be able to tell you if you have high arches, flat arches or you're kind of on the falling side. And this way you can get set up with the correct shoe for your type of foot and your running gait. So the last tip is the most important. You need to commit to doing something. The best way, the easiest way to do this is to sign up for a local race because once you invest the money, you're going to want to train. You're going to say like, hey, I need to be ready to do this. I don't want to have to walk the whole thing. You're going to show up in the way that you want to show up right now. So it's not all just like good feeling motivation. It's like, no, this race is on the calendar. I'm going to do it. Once you have a race set on your calendar, I recommend putting it two months out. Then you plan T minus race day. In my 10 minute plan, which has all 10 minute workouts, full body runner prevention, really awesome and intense ab workouts, booty finishers, mobility, flexibility, runner specific injury prevention. I also have two bonus runner plans in there. One is for beginner runners just like you. It is a walk to run 5k and then I have your split what to do on each day of the week that's also very flexible for you if you're a busy mom like me so that you can ensure your injury prevention, your strength and your toning are all taken care of as you start becoming a runner and you'll finish being able to run that 5k with confidence and injury free and then after that also included in the 10 minute plan is the advanced bonus runner plan. And that is where I get you running your fastest 5K that you've done in your life. So more intense style running, but it's a plan that you can use again and again because so much is included. My favorite top 30 recipes are in there as well. But no matter what you do, you need to have a goal on the calendar and you need to train for it. Otherwise your running is just going to kind of feel like I don't really know what to do today. I kind of forgot what I did last day. Having a goal and intentions on the calendar keeps you on track, it keeps you motivated, it feels really good to cross it off. It is physically rewarding and that way you are going to continue to make progress and keep getting better and better and better without getting injuries, without getting burnt out and knowing that you are 
confidently becoming a runner and that is going to feel motivating and make you want to keep coming back for more. It takes me about eight weeks when I'm getting back into running to really enjoy it again. Yes, I said it. Eight weeks. And this is like when I'm postpartum. That's when I'm like, I, I don't start running until eight weeks postpartum when I'm easing into it. I feel awful. I feel heavy. My gait is wide. I don't feel good at all. And it takes about eight weeks of consistency, slowly building up to becoming a runner again before I really enjoy it. When you get to a point where you forget that you're running, and you can really just enjoy it. You can really just listen to your audiobook, your podcast, look at the, your surroundings and just see how beautiful it is. And it can become something that you crave and you want. And then all of a sudden you're like, I am a runner. So that is what I hope for you. If you like this video, please do three things. Give it a thumbs up, press subscribe, and press the notification bell. These do so much to support my channel. And then runners out there, I really want to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below, what other tips did I leave out? What am I forgetting? Leave it all below because we are all here to build one another up. I believe we can learn a lot from each other and I'm excited to hear from you. I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.